why people fans of my uh, YouTube channel <laughs> okay I don't have so many subscribers but well I, I will keep on doing this because I love it so um, fluent forever how to learn any language fast and never forget it well I will keep on reading this book I ah, it's just uh, a few years, um, a few years, I mean, uh, so tired, I, I can't think. Uh, a few days ago, I saw um, an interview with the author, hmm? Gabriel. Uh, so uh, he, um, he was um, like uh, repeating all that we are reading right now in, in this book. And if you follow my previous, uh, if you are following me and my previous videos, you will see that he's not discovering the gravity it's something that it's so common we all know that so let's keep on reading uh, simplify simplify turning mountains uh, into molehills like all magnificent things it's it's very simple yeah so uh, when you look closely at what grammar can accomplish you come to the inevitable conclusion that grammar is impossibly complex. After all, um, at, at any moment of any day, you can take a few common words and use them to create a sentence that has never been written or said in the history of the world. And impossibly enough, it will make... And impossibly enough, uh, it will make um perfectly good sense to anyone who speaks english hell i can only find a single google hit for the first few words of the last sentence after all uh, at any moment of any day grammar creates infinite possibil uh, possibilities out of a finitive collection of words it's an impossible kind of magic and yet we use it on daily basis without the lightest flaw of our effort. Well, when you open a grammar book, you will be horrified now, <laughs> seriously. You will find a uh, uh, sorry, uh, 200 to 600 pages of grammar, grammatical forms. These books aren't infinitely uh, long, which is odd giving grammar uh, grammar's infinitive potential but they are long grammar after all uh, has a lot of work to do it needs uh, to tell us who's doing what when uh, they are doing uh, when they are doing it how they are doing it and all sorts of other madness that um, comes into our heads and flows out of our mouth uh, in the end, grammar allows us to relate any idea to any other idea in any possible way and to somehow send all of those relationships into the heads of the people who listen to us. By all accounts, it should be uh, completely impossible to describe and yet the authors of grammar books accomplish the impossible of a regular basis. Grammar is amazing and, and its complexity, but it is utterly uh, uh, inspiring in its simplicity, all of grammar's infinitive um, possibilities are the product of free basis operations. We add words, you like it, do you like it? We change their forms, I eat, I eat, uh, eat. Um, we and uh, we change the order. This is nice. Is it? Is this? Is this nice? Uh, that's it. That's it. And it's not just for English, every language grammar depends upon these free operations to turn their words into stories. For instance, uh, one, one of the grammar's uh, main uh, storytelling shops is to tell us who is doing what. In English, we indicate this by moving words around. Dogs eat cats versus dog, uh, cats eat dogs. So. Uh, I, um, a language like Russian, uh, changes the form of its words to accomplish the same goal. If a dog is eating a cat, it's a, a sabaka. 
But if the dog is uh, getting eaten, it turns to a sabaku. Uh, so, Japanese adds little function words. Uh, a dog as, uh, is an inu. Uh, but uh, if it is eaten, inu wa. And it's, it's, uh, if it's begin eaten, it's inu wa. Its simplicity, this simplicity, makes grammar extraordinarily easy to learn for even the most complex of grammatical forms is built out of these three basic pieces. Take English's passive voice and consider the difference between my door at um, my homework active versus my ho homework was eaten by my dog passive. This is a complex grammatical transformation. Uh, the two sentences barely resemble each other, and the change uh, in meaning uh, between them is subtle. Uh, although uh, the facts in both sentences are the, the same, uh, we started with a, st a story about a, a bad dog and uh, uh, in that. Um, ended uh, with a story about a poor, unfortunate homework assignment. But all of this complexity is a product of simple operations. There are a couple of new words uh, was and by. One new word form it turned into item, and the word order changed. This will, uh, will be a lot to learn all at once. But it's easy to learn uh, to learn in bit sized pieces. So um, and that's precisely what you will uh, do in your tertiary language. To uh, learn a new grammatical form, all you have to do is find an example from your grammar book, understand the gist of the story in the example. Uh, you will use your grammar books, explanations and translations, and ask yourself three questions, okay? Do you see any uh, new words here? Do you see any new words uh, forms here? And is the word order surprising you? Mm -hmm. So then you will make uh, flashcards for uh, any formation you like to learn. My homework was eaten at the time, uh, my dog. So my homework was da, 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 to eat um, by, the, uh, by my dog. So uh, you will notice uh, in the above cards uh, that I am using an example sentence to teach myself the word by. Uh, this is how we l will learn abstract vocabulary. A word like by is difficult, uh, difficult to visualize and, or um, define. Uh, define. Uh, you usually don't see a buy uh, on your way to work, and while you could uh, bristle uh, with um, some obstacles, definition by is a proposition that indicates the agent of a passive construction. Create a definition for your uh, for our uh, our sample sentence is much easier. By is the word that fits into my homework was eaten by my dog. So uh, that's, that's uh, what it really means after all. It's uh, the word uh, we happen to use in the particular context. context. Uh, and since, since uh, our example sentence for by is um, a real story, uh, we can find a picture to help us remember that word. Um, there are more than a million pictures of guilty dogs and showed up homework assignments on Google Images. So can, can we use this strategy for every word almost? Uh, for functional words like off and what, uh, this strategy works every time. These words don't mean much outside of their context. And so any examples can tell you precisely how to learn them. Of uh, is the um, word 
uh, that fits into I like a glass of water and what uh, what is a word that fits into what's your name so this may not be the only ways to use these words what for instance shows up that shows the app that um, in all sorts of contexts what did you do today and I will eat what he's having uh, but but you can learn uh, any surprising new examples of, of a word by turning them into additional flashcards. In the process, you will pick up a solid uh, intuitive field for these words in a wide variety of context, which is a thousand times more useful than a clunky dictionary definition or a giant pile of translations. Um, that is to say, according to my dictionary, uh, terms uh, by, 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 I think, means for, at, by, on, with, during, upon, near, in, care of, next to, and so on. Not very helpful. Mm, okay, so, uh, for some words that convey abstract concepts like change or honesty, um, you may need an additional help. You can learn how to use a word with um, an example sentence. He's an honest man. But you often, often uh, need particularly good um, examples to help you remember what a word means. Abraham uh, Lincoln was an honest man. In general, we are, going, uh, we are not going to run uh, into this problem very often. You are using a grammar book and it's designed uh, to give you good, clear examples for the words and concepts you encountered. But uh, when you do uh, run into a problematic word, uh, just uh, skip it. As soon as you have a little more grammar under your belt, you will be able to leave your textbook uh, behind and seek out your own example sentences on the internet. A strategy we will discuss in the next chapter by taking example sentences from your grammar book and breaking them down into new words, word forms and word orders, you get an enormous amount of millage uh, from every example you choose. As a result, you learn a lot faster than you are uh, supposed to. While your grammar book is busy explaining the past tense of it, uh, you are learning everything that sentence has to offer. Um, where to put her, uh, how sister turns into sisters, and so on. She, she at, um, at um, uh, her sister's birthday cake, for example. By the time uh, your grammar book gets around to explaining the, pos uh, the possessive from her, you will already have it memorized. This turns into a fun game. It's like a race uh, with your grammar book to see whether you will uh, completely master a topic before your grammar book even talks about it. You win every time. So, key, key points. Use grammar book as a source of simple examples, sentences, and dialogues. Pick up, pick, and choose your favorite uh, examples of each grammar rule. Then break those examples into um, new words, new forms, and new um, word orders. You will end up with a pile of effective, easy-to-learn flashcards.